Huzzah, and welcome future and current artists to another episode of Drawing with Dr. Doodle. Well, before we begin, you're only going to need two items. Hopefully you have these, a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, if you want to color your work in when we're done and you have a crayon or a colored pencil or markers, you can color it in when we finish today. However, if you don't have those supplies right now, you can always wait to color your work in when you get those supplies. So you know what? Let's begin. Hello and welcome to a unique episode of Drawing with Dr. Doodle. It's going to be unique because I wanted to make this a little bit more personal for this episode and that's why you're watching a time-lapse video of me drawing out multiple images of a character named Nora for a game idea that I have. It's actually a game that came about based on a dream I had and that's why it's my dream game. I really hope to complete it sometime in the near future. But anyway, the game is called Ice Baby. You play as this character named Nora. She's a zookeeper in, a, in the future in an orbital zoo, meaning that the zoo orbits the planet Earth. And sadly, one night, meteors strike the zoo, causing it to malfunction and careen into planet Earth. And now what you need to do is, while carrying the last baby penguin, and that's what you can see the shape in her hand is, um, while carrying the last baby penguin and saving other animals in the zoo, you have to make your escape. And it's a puzzle game. So. What you're seeing here is a called a character model sheet. A character model sheet is used mainly in video, the video game industry and animation industry, film industry, where you have a character that's worked on by multiple artists and you want to make sure that throughout the course of the content that's being produced, the animation or the video game, the character stays looking the same way whenever it is drawn or worked on by the different artists. You can also use a character model sheet to help just one artist, in this case myself here, to be able to draw the character in different poses, in different actions. Character model sheet, you want to make sure that it not only shows what the character looks like, you want to see the character uh, in different actions and showcasing different emotions that they might have. As you can see with this, I'm drawing this digitally and that allows me to uh, erase and quickly erase and easily erase any mistakes that I've made. And with every drawing that you make, I always suggest that you draw the basic shapes first and then start adding the details as you can see here and that's when you get to start inking it in now because i'm using an ipad pro and the app procreate i'm able to digitally color this in as well if you have art supplies that let you color in your work like colored pencils crayons markers paints you can use them when you're done drawing all the details what you'll see here uh, as we go along, I start adding shadows and highlights, and those are the last things I normally add when I'm coloring in my artwork and Nora right here. The highlights are where the light sources hit a character, like where they're on the character, where we can see the lights, and then shadows, as you can see, are opposite the lights because shadows are just light being blocked and just like with details you want to do the highlights and the shadows last and when you're coloring you'll start with a flat basic color so one type of blue one type of green one type of yellow and then you can add a darker version of that a lighter version of that for the shadows and the highlights respectively and that's why i'm filling in the shadows there and then i'm moving on to the next drawing so this pose right here that's finished shows Nora from the front view holding the penguin. And as you can see, 
I was testing out a bunch of different ideas that I didn't really like. I wanted to have Nora push something. And what you'll see is that I decided that Nora pushing an ice block shouldn't be facing to the right, that it should be facing to the left in this picture. And once I decided to go along with that, I first worked on the face and based that on the original drawing that I did just here. And now I'm adding details, but laying out where the arms go before I add the fingers. And you see that thing around her wrist in both pictures. That's a, a digital control watch, which allows her, which allows Nora to locate herself in the zoo and all the animals as well. Talking about animals, since she's using both of her hands to push the ice cube, I figured that she would need some kind of baby pack to be able to carry the baby penguin with her. And that's what we see on her back right now. I'm drawing the details for the frizz of her hair. She's got curly hair. And now I'm inking in all the details, adding more details than I even penciled in. And then I'll be able to erase or get rid of the pencil layer when I'm done. And as you can see, I'm taking my time here. And even if I make mistakes, I am comfortable erasing them. And that's why I suggest that whenever you work on something, you start with the basic shapes first because you won't be so attached to it. You'll be able to erase it and it'll be easier to erase because you shouldn't be drawing so dark anyway. Now I'm using the same colors that I used in the original drawing. Because I'm doing this digitally on my iPad, I'm able to actually grab the exact colors. Um, but just from looking at it, you can tell what kind of colors you used. And now I'm working on the shadows, and then I'll add the highlights and some of the other colors that I'm missing in the details. There we go, we've got our highlights there and some more shadows where I believe they need to be. Again, shadows go on the opposite side of where the light is shining. And now I'm coloring in the ice cube, adding a shadow underneath Nora, adding some details in her hair, on her skin. You take the time and it really will show in your work. And then because of this digital, I get to shrink down the two drawings, move it to the side and make more room for more drawings. So here I'm building up a drawing of Nora her first time picking up and holding up and finding the baby penguin. So since she's stoic and just um, doesn't have a smile on her face in the other two drawings, I decided that she should be joyful, she should be happy upon finding the baby penguin and holding it up. And so when it's your turn, when you decide to work on, and yes, this is not a step-by-step -step project, but the project that I would like you to work on when you're done watching this is make your own character up. It could be human, it could be an animal, it could be a monster, it, it could be an alien. It could be whatever you want it to be. Make sure it's still appropriate to show your parents and maybe later myself. And what you're going to want to do is show not just how they look straight on, but you want to have them have some poses where they're doing some kind of action and also show them showing some emotion. They could be happy, they could be angry, they could, you could show happy anger, sadness, and I want to see what you do. It doesn't need to be as detailed as, that, as what we see here with Nora. I know this is going to be hard for many of you, but those of you in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade and, and older, I know that you'll be able to do something even if it's simple. In animation, SpongeBob uses very simple character designs. SpongeBob himself is just a rectangular sponge. Uh, Patrick, the sea star, is mainly just a triangle. And so what you could do is you could use those basic shapes and form a character of your own. And now, because this is a digital, I was able to hide those other drawings. And what I'm doing now is since this is the future, I, I wanted to have 
there be robotic animals in the zoo as well. And so if you can guess what kind of animal this is based off of, you should take the time right now and try to guess. I'll give you a couple seconds. If you guessed a robotic gorilla, you are correct. And as you can see, look, I'm making basic shapes before I start adding the details. And again, that's what I suggest you do with all of your drawings. And you could break down almost anything into basic shapes if you have trouble drawing it. From the basic shapes, you can add as many details as you want, but the more details you add, the, and if you decide to color it in, the, the more work it will be to color it in. So now I'm adding the details here. So what I wanted to do with the robotic uh, creatures, the robotic animals, was that I wanted there to be something that Nora could control. So that way in the game, that you as Nora are able to take control of these robotic animals and then use them to solve puzzles that you couldn't solve by yourself. And then later on, we'll see that I took that one step further and there will be animals in the game that are malfunctioning, they're not working properly, they're broken, and you can't control them and they are chasing you and you have to solve puzzles to either uh, block off and protect Nora from those malfunctioning robotic animals and or just destroy them outright. So if you have been inspired by what you see right now, you could always pause or stop this video and start working on your own ideas. Maybe the character that you're going to be working on. Oh, so as you can see here, I'm putting some numbers, I think a barcode over there just to, again, a lot of these details that you add, they don't need to fully make sense without any information behind it, but you try to add details to build your world. And right now I'm drawing a smaller version of Nora holding up her hand with the digital wristwatch that will control the robotic animals. And you can see Nora's smaller than this robotic gorilla, but we only can tell that because both are in the same scene. This is very important in art. Whenever you have a drawing, if you don't have any other objects in that picture, you can't really tell the size of that image. So if you have a drawing of a dog, but you don't have a tree near it, let's say, or anything else that you would normally know the size of, you can't tell the difference between the sizes. And now that I started coloring in the gorilla, I can share with you that I decide to change the colors. Right now, it's a lot of warm colors, which I feel clash or didn't go well with the warm colors. And there's a lot of yellow in this gorilla, and there was a lot of yellow and brown, uh, not only in the gorilla, but also in the clothing that Nora was wearing. So I decided later on to change the coloring of the gorilla to be more purple where it once was yellow. And you'll see that change in a little bit. Also, what I do keep though, are the functioning robotic eyes are the sea green. So now I put everything back, start coloring in Nora. And then that's when I'll be noticing that, oh, the colors are too similar and I need to change the gorilla's colors. And there we go through the magic of using a digital application. I'm changing the yellow to purple. And as you probably feel and see the same thing that I'm seeing, that it really helps to pop everything out. So the dark orangey red, I change the yellow orange. I start adding the shadows and it starts to pop out, become more 3D. And that's the reason why we you know, use the highlights and the shadows to make it look more three-dimensional. So now I'll, I'll take this, these two drawings and move it to the top right to make room for a picture of Nora running away from a broken uh, or malfunctioning robotic rhinoceros. So as you can see, I'm roughing out one arm looped around the baby penguin on the top, one arm below looped around holding the baby penguin as Nora is running 
first I thought maybe I'd have her hand out trying to make like a stop sign, but I didn't think that uh, to the rhinoceros, but I didn't think that was the best way for her to use her hand, that she would probably be holding on for dear life to the baby penguin to make sure that it was safe. And in this picture, we can see that she see, she's showing fear on her face. And you'll see in this picture that at a certain point, I realize that I don't really like uh, the location of the eyes in the picture of Nora. And then the, the drawing that I am doing of the rhino isn't from my head. I remember I was drawing this from a picture of a rhino, but I started adding and changing the features to be more robotic. So you can draw from an, um, another image, just make sure that you make it your own by adding details of your, of your own. So what once were realistic looking ears are now more, look, they look kind of like speakers, mini speakers. There are more lines and uh, instead of roundish lines, there's a lot of flat lines. And then what you'll see is when I start coloring this in, instead of the functioning eyes like of the gorilla where it's sea green, it's going to be red. I'll add lightning bolts coming from it and some other details. Now I'm inking this in or, or um, going over the pencil lines with an inking pen, a digital inking pen. And even though some of the lines weren't there before, I'm adding more details and that is up to you. But once you use an inking pen in, in real life, not digitally, it's a lot, you can't really remove those lines. So make sure when you use an inking pen, not digitally, that you are okay with the lines that you've made. So now that I finished inking in the rhinoceros, the robotic rhino, I am now inking in Nora and the baby penguin. And as you can see, I'm adding even individual fingernails that you can see. Um, I'm adding details in the hair on the rhino horn just before, inside the eyes for the pupils, the lips, everything. And I'm taking my time. This is all sped up. I, I believe this took me uh, around a couple of days of work. And that's okay. If you, if you rush something, it's not going to look as nice, it's not going to be as nice as if you took your time. As you're seeing this, I want you to think about, even if you feel that it's a little bit too complicated, what could you do character design wise with just basic shapes? Maybe you can, your characters are just basic shapes. Maybe you make a triangle that's a creature or a character. Um, if you find this too hard, again, it doesn't need to be as detailed as the work that I'm doing here. You can always just use basic shapes. And now I'm already up to coloring. I'm grabbing the colors from the other drawings of Nora that I've already done. Adding the shadows. I'll be adding the highlights as well. And then I'll start coloring in the robotic rhino. And again, shadows always go on the other side of where a light source is because shadows are just light being blocked. And there we go. We can see her digital wristwatch that can control functioning, not malfunctioning, not broken robots, but functional, not broken robots like the gorilla up top. And that's why she's running away from the rhino. She can't control it. And then I'm adding shadows right there. Oh, there we go. And so I make the eye red to indicate that it's not working properly, whereas the robot that is working has kind of sea green eyes. I realize when you're adding shadows and highlights, what you're doing is you are changing your image from something that's very flat and two-dimensional into something that the, presents the illusion of 3D. And that's also why I'm adding these details right now, which are supposed to represent cracks and, and damage. And there we go. I think we've done enough for today. 
And that's why I suggest that we take a quick puzzle break. As an artist, it's a good idea to take a break from your work. Taking a break allows us to look at our work with fresh eyes and possibly with some new ideas. So that's why we're going to take a puzzle break. And what type of puzzles are we going to do on Drawing with Dr. Doodle? Well, we're going to tackle puzzles that I love to do. They're called Rebus puzzles. Rebus is spelled R-E-B-U-S. And what is a Rebus puzzle? Well, I'm glad you asked. Behind me is an example of just one, and we're gonna walk through the solution to this puzzle right now. So what word do you see behind me? Well, take your time. If you guessed the word behind me is hurry, then you're half right. What direction is the word hurry going in? Well, take some more time to solve that. Well, if you guess that the word hurry is going up, then you have half of the solution as well. So let's combine the two half answers or half solutions that we solve together. Hurry, so we've got the word hurry, and the word hurry is going up. And if you heard me just say that and it clicked in your head that the answer is hurry up, then you have solved this rebus. So with that out of the way, why don't you try to solve this puzzle by yourself, but you don't need to worry, hurry up to solve this puzzle. Take your time, and if you get your parents' permission, you can email the solution to thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the lesson. Now it's time for me, Harold, the extremely talented art critic, to critique your artwork. Wait, what? Don't I didn't agree to this. I won't be too harsh. Why, thank you. Uh, what? Okay, Wait. fellow art detectives, let's get critiquing. What do you see? What do you think is happening in this artwork? What materials do you think the artist used to make this artwork? Does this remind you of anything? What questions do you have about the artwork? Pretend you can enter into the artwork. What do you see? What do you smell? What do you hear? What piece of the artwork is your favorite and why? If you could change one thing about this artwork, what would you change? How does this artwork make you feel? Can you explain why? If you had to describe this artwork to a friend, what kind of words would you use? So, Dr. D, was that so hard now? It wasn't hard what at all, Harold. Hope Thank you. Is how hard I will critique him next time. Until next time, future and current artists, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed creating art with me and that I've inspired you to create as imaginative artwork in the future. If you'd like to have your work displayed on, the sh on a future episode, obviously you need your parents' permission, but once you get it, you can email your artwork at thedoodledoctor at gmail.com. Well, bye.